the collaborative normal tension glaucoma study before that study there was a question whether IOP was or was not involved in normal tension glaucoma if IOP has no rule then it would be of no point in attempting to lower the IOP by treatment so the goal of that study was to see is IOP lowering therapy appropriate in patients with normal tension glaucoma and the second goal was to learn more about the untreated natural history of the disease this study included 145 eyes aged between 20 to 90 several IOP readings were taken none of them should be higher than 24 millimeters mercury eyes should have characteristic field changes and disc changes of glaucoma and the follow-up was done as long as the field was stable once there is progression in the field or the disc then randomization started so after waiting for a four weeks washout period 10 readings were taken and none of them should be higher than 24 millimeters randomization could be immediate if there is threatening to point of fixation <coughs> other than that there was no randomization just follow up every three months in the first year or every six months later after that and only randomization was done if there is a visual field changes or disc head changes or disc hemorrhage only then patient can be randomized into one of the two arms the no treatment arm or the treatment arm for the no treatment arm just follow up unless further change in the disc appearance or the field was documented in the treated arm medication was given laser could be done surgery was be could be done or any combination the goal was to lower the IOP by 30 percent in the medications beta blockers and adrenergic agents were excluded as they may affect the outcome by direct effect on the eye or their systemic side effect follow up with in the early part every three months and after the first year every six months follow up with the disc and the field there are two papers published in the same journal uh, back in 1988 the first one was to be sure about the influence of the IOP on the course of the normal tension glaucoma so in this paper there was a, a comparison between the two groups the first group the untreated group and the second group was only the progression was noticed once the 30 percent reduction is achieved so it was a comparison between the untreated group with the patients in whom the IOP was lowered by 30 percent in this paper the difference criteria for visual field based line establishment because the untreated arm the visual field was at the time of randomization while in the treated arm a new visual fields were taken only when the 30 per percent reduction is achieved and this is the starting point to compare for any further progression progression was found to be in the untreated arm in 35% and in the treated arm in 12% so in the untreated arm the visual field at the very beginning of randomization check any change while in the treated arm new fields were done only after the 30% reduction and this is the baseline field and any further progression was noticed so we can see that when the IOP was high 35% progress compared when the IOP was low only 12% progress this denotes that the IOP is 
pathogenic factor in the progression of the field, in some cases of normal tension glaucoma. The second paper then published on the same journal, same year, the purpose was to determine the effectiveness of IOP reduction on visual field progression. That is the traditional clinical trial intent to treat analysis, thus including cases with inability to achieve 30% lowering IOP, included progression that might occur before the IOP lowering is achieved, included the compliance issue, included the visual complications of achieving an IOP. So both of the groups followed up from the baseline measurement at the time of randomization. So both fields at the time of randomization are checked for any further progression. In the no treatment arm, the progression was 26.6%, and in the treatment arm, the progression was 12.2%. So again, IOP is pathognomonic factor in the process of visual feed deterioration in some of the normal tension glaucoma patients. Regarding the probability of cataract, incidence of cataract in the no treatment arm 14, in the part treated medically and with laser was 25%, and in the part treated with the trabeculectomy was 48%. Regarding the risk factors for progression, it was found that migraine, females, and the presence of disc hemorrhage at the time of diagnosis are all risk factor for progression. To see the natural history of the normal tension glaucoma, patients never received any treatment were included. So, Patients examined are not randomized at all, or patients waiting for randomization at that period they received no treatment, or patients randomized immediately to receive no treatment, or randomized late to receive no treatment. So this came to around 160 patients observed without any treatment to see the natural history of the normal tension glaucoma. It was found that although some cases show progression in few months, most of the cases only progress slowly. After three years, one third of this group, the 160 group receiving no treatment, only one third showed localized progression and by five to seven years, only one half showed localized progression. Although approximately half of the cases sh showed a confirmed localized visual field deterioration at seven years, the change is typically small and slow, often insufficient to measurably affect the mean deviation index.